I imagine what a lot of you are doing already. And if you're not, you probably will after this review. You're going to take your keyboards, put your flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the locked position, and ring away on the internet. Oh my god, I can't believe I did this. Oh my god, this is so stupid. Oh my god, thank god we got AEW New Japan because WWE is fucking stupid. They put the fucking WWE title on him. On him. On him. You can already see it coming. Lay off your keyboards just a little bit. Keyboards are objects too. They got feelings, okay? Christ almighty. Well, for a show, it seemed like we were just kind of phoning it in. This company, at least if nothing else, gave us something to talk about. But you can feel free to talk about it in the comments section of this video and follow the show on Twitter and we can continue the conversation there and make sure if you're not already subscribed to this channel, smash that subscribe button. Let's have some fun, shall we? All right, so where do we begin with Elimination Chamber? Uh, first, since Lacey Egg Evans got mumu'd, I understand that she wasn't going to be able to wrestle against Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship, but we couldn't find somebody. Anybody? Anybody? Interesting. Now, if you're saying you're going to wait for Charlotte to do the inevitable at WrestleMania, oh, God, don't make me gag, but just really weird. It seemed like nobody was on the same page. It seemed like fans were aware that this match wasn't going to happen before the people in the company, because I think they were even talking about on the pre-show that Asuka was going to defend her title. What the hell are you talking about? Why are you hyping up something that's not going to happen? But what did happen were five other matches on the show. That's right, five. Get in, get out, be done at 9.30 Eastern. I'm down with that. Yeah. SmackDown Elimination Chamber match kicked it off. And at least it wasn't Kevin Owens. I'll give it that. I, I look at this though, and I felt like from a booking standpoint, there were more creative, just flat out better options that you could have done here instead of what you did do. You could have had Jay actually win this thing. Because, I mean, he was in this match. Could have done some, you gotta lay down for the Tribal Chief type of shit. And protect the Tribal Chief for WrestleMania and make this all part of one big plan. That would have worked. That would have been interesting. That would have fit in to the master strategist that is our Tribal Chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns. You could have done Cesaro here. Because you've been having Cesaro be showed relatively well recently. He's getting involved into a program with Seth Rollins that you are building towards WrestleMania with. You could have had Cesaro win this chamber match, go and face Roman immediately afterwards, because he ain't waiting. That's right, I won't either. Get the fuck out of Dodge as early as you can. My title's not at risk here. <laughs> I want to go home and put the kids to bed early, damn it. And then you could have had Seth Rollins interfere. You have the ties between Roman and Seth. Now Seth would have cost Cesaro something that meant a lot. That opportunity. Instead, they went with the one, yeah, all of you that wanted Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, you're going to get it here in the Elimination Chamber, and he's going to get bitched out in like a minute. <laughs> That's right. Ugh. I guess. <laughs> you wanted it. You got it. <laughs> oh, man. And this was all just a killing of time to get to Edge coming in and making his heel turn official and turning on our tribal chief, Roman Reigns. And you, know, you look at the storytelling that was done here. Edge spears him getting... At Roman back for what he did on Friday. Edge puts his hands behind his back just like Roman did on SmackDown. Whispers something to him just like Roman did. Pointing at the WrestleMania sign. You know, like, again, I cannot imagine looking at this and saying that you would have rather have seen Daniel freaking Bryan versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. How is that possible? Well, I know some of you nerds are going to sit there and say, let me get the keyboard. Well, if you're going to do that, then you should have had Daniel Bryan win. He's the breakfast club killer. And then you'll sit there and have him and Edge face off at WrestleMania. <laughs> 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 
At least you got that out of your systems now. And now Daniel Bryan has nothing to do for Mania, which is just fine with me. But in the meanwhile, Ed should be careful. Be careful what you wish for. Because you just might get it. Then you got the U.S. title triple threat. There was no Keith Lee. So they had a fatal four-way number one contenders match on the pre-show, which Morrison won, which makes you ask the question of, Retribution has got to be the stupidest faction we have ever seen in WWE history, right? Like Ali's in that four-way. He's got help ringside and still can't get the job done. Like what purpose do they serve? What is their point? There is no point. There is no purpose. It is stupid and everything about them is stupid. And of course, getting to this spot, of course they're going to have the black man lose his title during Black History Month. That's petty level Vince to the nth degree. What better way to show, right? That MLK's your hero, Vince, than having Lashley lose the title. Well, at least you did it in a way where he was protected because he wasn't actually involved in the pinfall. But of all the people, it's got to be Matt Riddle. Bro, 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 bro. This fucking Dollar Tree Lady Lee version of frickin' RVD with all the mimicking of shtick and none of the appeal is now your United States champion. A perfect example of why the hell you don't want to watch Raw every week. Like even with, once you got Morrison into this match, it seems like you could have done something infinitely better here by having Morrison win the strap and especially with what happened later on in this show you could build an inevitable tag match at Mania and put the U.S. title online. Like, just weird decision here. And of all people, like, why, why does the USA Network like Matt Riddle? Like, what is the appeal? What do you like about him? He's a fucking putz. And as far as fans, what do you like about him? He's a putz. Among other things. Unbelievable. The Women's Tag Team Championship match, I think we thought one of two things would happen. Either Sasha or Bianca would turn on the other and they wouldn't win the belt or they'd actually win the belts just so that way they could lose them later to use them as a prop to help advance their story towards WrestleMania. Well, needless to say, you got none or one, neither one of those. That's right. Black Girl Magic gonna lose at Elimination Chamber. All because of Reginald, because of his thirst. Now, you know where this is going, too. You're going to sit there and try and shoehorn wedge Carmella into this. Why? She's a fucking loser. She sucks. Who cares? Get her the hell out of the way. Because everything you're doing with this is a distraction towards what you should be building up to be one of your either night one or night two, but probably night one main event of WrestleMania, which is Bianca versus Sasha. For this, SmackDown was Women's Championship. Like, this is an example of where you're getting too cute. For what? Probably because you booked yourself into a corner where you don't want either one of those girls to lose and you feel like Carmelo's got to be the designated pinfall person at Mania. Well, then at least do it with Bailey. It was bad. A waste of time. Which brings us to the main event, which was the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match. This shit started like 8.45, and you know what? Cool with that. Let's wrap this crap up, because we got work in the morning. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Um, it was. <laughs> I don't know why Kofi was so adamantly talking about Randy Orton's thighs. That was weird. Your thighs are thick. <laughs> really? <laughs> I guess. What was even more surprising is... They just had Kofi eliminate Orton relatively quick, like. So one of the thing that what things that people were actually looking forward to potentially with this match is wondering how the feed was going to appear, when the feed was going to appear, maybe Alexa would appear, and instead you got none of that. Randy was just quickly discarded, and it was just really, really weird. Another reminder too about just how stupid Retribution is. Why wouldn't you have? Retribution attack Kofi and take him out. That way, at least you're tying into previous story and then have Ali take his place. Well, when you're the stupidest faction in WWE history, why the fuck would you, I suppose? But even as you watch this match, there's like different moments here. Like there's the one point where Jeff Hardy hits the swanton on AJ. He gets up. And he's going to get ready to pin AJ. 
And Drew hits him with a Claymore kick to eliminate him. So, number two Drew is also a dipshit because, you know, you just think about it logically, like, why wouldn't you let him eliminate the other person and then you hit him with the Claymore kick so that way two people are out of the match instead of just one? That's dumb. And then even with the whole thing when Sheamus is getting ready to take out Drew and then here comes AJ Styles and he ends up taking out Sheamus. Why wouldn't you wait until Sheamus pins Drew and then hit him with the phenomenal forearm so you could actually win the fucking title? Anyways, and speaking of that, I didn't realize the whole purpose of having the pods and having the five minutes in between entrances that you can have Amos take down the plexiglass so AJ can enter the match early. Weird. I guess we're just going to let him do it? Whatever. Uh, but, you know, once this match is going, you're like, man, just get through it and have Drew win it. And that's what they did. And then everybody's sitting there waiting with bated breath to figure out, like, are we going to have a Miz cash in? Or, oh, boy, did we ever. <laughs> Out of nowhere, here comes Bobby Lashley bashing frickin' Drew's brains in. Apparently ties into the conversation MVP and Miz were having backstage, huh? Interesting. Wonder what they were out there. What type of deal they were talking about. So once Lashley lays waste to Drew, here comes Miz. He's the money in the bank holder. He cashes in. And son of a bitch, wouldn't you know that we're ending the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view in 2021 with The Miz as WWE Champion. Awesome! <laughs> and, and of course, again, let's get the keyboards ready because you know you got all types of flaming to do with your keyboard finger. Fucking keyboard fingers on fire. Yeah, I can't believe they would do this. The Miz is a champion. He's stupid. He's a joke. He's a comedy act. What's next? You're going to sit there and take the David Arcana approach and have that bunny become the WWE champion at WrestleMania? Like, that's the worst possible thing they could do at this point. I can't believe this. Why would they do this to Drew? No, shut the hell up. Like, if nothing else, they gave themselves options. Drew will get a rematch, maybe a fast lane. Then you can have Bad Bunny cost the Miz that match, and you launch off towards Lashley and Drew at Mania, which also then gives you more heat for the Miz and Morris and Bad Bunny Damian Priest tag match that is inevitably coming at WrestleMania any fucking ways. Or you sit there and you say, Lashley gets the title shot against Miz. He beats Miz. Maybe a build towards a babyface turn for Hurt Business. You build towards a heel turn for Drew. And you still have Lashley versus Drew at Mania. No matter what the bottom line is, maybe it's a convoluted way to do it. But shit, they need some type of fire. They need some type of spark. So why the hell not? Drew as a champion sucks. He's boring as hell. And if you're going to say, well, Ashley's just another Drew, he's got MVP and a faction behind him. That's where the comparison ends, you morons. So you can either go into that next pay-per-view, which is what, going to be the first one on Peacock? You could have Miz versus Drew or Miz versus Lashley. You could do some type of goddamn triple threat. Right? You got options. That's the point. You've got options. You could have Bad Bunny come in, interfere, and cost him the match. You've got options. You've got logical things that can tie in. You could get to Lashley having a world title match at WrestleMania and possibly walking out of Mania the champ. What the hell is so wrong with that? And if you're telling me that the Miz being champion for a few weeks helps get us to that end state, then sign me the fuck up. If anything, as I watch everybody again with their <laughs> on social media, it's a perfect reminder of why the hell the majority of fans would have no business, no business at all, ever booking a wrestling show or writing for a wrestling show. Because I could only imagine the abominations and abortions of storylines and decisions that you guys would do. How you can't see this coming. How you can't see the vision. How you can't see the path forward is beyond fucking me. 
Is it great or awesome? Hell no! Like to the point in 2021 that we're taking a mid-carder like Miz and putting the world title on him to do anything and basically using the title potentially as a plot device for a match with him and a freaking hip-hop artist in 2021 is stupid! But it's so bad at this point, what the hell other option, what the hell other choice you got? At least it's something! And hell, at this point, Bad Bunny being WWE Champion would be far, far, far from the worst thing they could possibly do. Be much better than having Drew Champion for another six months or a year, I guarantee to you that. And it's not where they're going, obviously, but Christ Almighty, the ranting and raging that you're seeing about this, people getting so blinded by the moment and getting caught up in the moment that they can't see the forest through the trees. And no, I will grant you also, WWE deserves absolutely zero benefit of the doubt. But, can't you see where this is going? Can't you see what's going to happen? But at least there's nothing else, they have options! They have options! And the reason they needed options is because Drew's not that dude to begin with! No matter how much they try to force him and pound him and prop him up, it's not working! So if you gotta take this roundabout way to freaking have Lashley walk out of Mania the Champ, then I'm all fucking for it! If this is all about just getting to the point where Drew is champion again leaving WrestleMania, then you know what? You should take to Twitter and social media and flame away with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire because that's just one gigantic waste of fucking time! But if you can't see how this is being positioned, if you can't see what's coming around the corner and not around the bend, I don't know what the hell to tell you. Just wait a couple of weeks, okay? Maybe you'll feel a little bit better after fast lane. that's all I'm saying. And maybe you won't. But you likely probably will. Anyways, you let me know. Are you actually thinking that Miz is going to go to Mania the Champ and walk out the champion? Are you really afraid of Bad Bunnies? Gonna be the next WWE Champion? Like, what are you guys thinking here? What would you rather done? Done none of this and had fucking Sheamus versus Drew at WrestleMania? Bleh. I'm good on that. I'm just saying.